Hello. <laughs> um, Captain decided to um, join us, I guess. Go, go. So today's video, I have a super cool project. I just, I love how it turned out. I have a hack for you and I have just a little decor piece that um, I added to this video. This video is part of the Third Thursday Thrift Flip open playlist and it is hosted by my friend Tammy from The Rusted Willow and Marika from Marika's Creations. I'm going to have a link to the host channels as well as to the playlist in the description box below. You guys know where to find that. But um, I'm excited about today's video, so let's get crafting. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa, and this is our gray house. Okay, y'all, this is how my craft room looked, my craft room office closet looked. And the ribbon was kind of a jumbled mess. It was all over the place. So this DIY is more of a hack than it is a DIY, but we are gonna flip some cardboard into something else that will make this space much more functional. I did try to straighten it up and I put it in stacks, which, you know, looks a little bit neater for sure. But if you wanted the bottom green plaid ribbon there, You'd have to take everything off the top and it just wasn't super functional. So I saw Tammy from the Rusted Willow. She had taken some cardboard and wrapped ribbon around that. And I thought, that's a fantastic idea. So I Googled spool templates and I found this little thing on Amazon and I just enlarged it and printed it out on my printer. And I used that as a template to cut out the rest of the, uh, the cardboard spools. And I just used scrap cardboard and lots of us had that on hand, especially if we order from Amazon. And I made two templates, a small and a large one because of the space that I'm using it in. So I measured the space and I just made the template as big as I needed it to fit my little shelves that they're on. And so I traced them all out, then I cut them out and I did have to use my X-Acto knife because it was a little hard to cut. Some of the cardboard was thicker. And so I just had to use the X-Acto knife to kind of clean up the edges. They're not perfect templates, but they certainly work. So I used painter's tape to paint, to hold down the ribbon, wrap the ribbon around. Then I used a straight pin to, you know, adhere the end of the ribbon to itself so that it would stay in place. And I think it worked like a charm. And this is how my closet uh, ribbon rack looked before. And this is how it looks now. So. It may not be 100% aesthetically pleasing, but it sure looks a heck of a lot better and it's way more functional than the other way that I had it. So thank you so much, Tammy, for the idea. And I hope you guys enjoyed this hack. And let me know if you guys use it. I had this watering can and this like milk jug thing in my stash. And what I did was I added them to a little container and I had some vinegar, some... Um, Hydrogen peroxide, I couldn't think of what it was called. Hydrogen peroxide and salt. I don't really have measurements, y'all. I Googled a bunch of different things and people had lots of different measurements. I just put it in and then set that stuff in there. And this is how it was rusting up. And it works. <laughs> now, I, I, I personally kind of prefer the paint rust over this method. But you know what? This one works. And I always like trying different and new ideas to see how I can craft better. I did have to kind of flip it over to make sure, you know, it was getting evenly coated all around. And then I really wasn't happy with how much, like the color of the rust. So I'm adding some green and some brown and just some different colors to kind of make it a little bit more muted rust look. And y'all, I popped some greenery in there. And look, that watering can looks super cute. I use it on my tear tray and it adds just another like texture to it, another element and another color to the, you know, tear tray. And I love how it turned out. And here's that watering can. Now you can kind of see a line where it didn't really rust as well, but still, I think it looks vintage. I think it looks, you know, like you picked it up on the side of the road or something. And I love it. Hey y'all, I'm just popping in here. I hope you're enjoying today's video and the projects that I'm sharing so far. But I also wanted to mention, if you're looking for a creative community to connect to, I've got one for you. It's my Facebook group. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I have that group with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY and the link to it is going to be in the description box below and I hope you join and if you do please post something that you're working on or maybe just leave a positive and encouraging comment for somebody else because um, 
that's what we're all about uplifting each other anyway let's get back to the diys okay y'all i had this i think i got it from hobby lobby on clearance and i think i got that birdhouse on hobby lobby from hobby lobby on clearance as well the pedestal thing is actually a candle holder and i'm just using some wood glue on what is actually the bottom of the candle holder and i'm going to glue this birdhouse to the bottom of the candle holder and I'm um, using wood glue because it's raw wood to raw wood and I think it adheres the best. And you can't see, but I'm putting some rubber bands around the base. I'm gonna show you in just a second here, but that's to kind of keep it together while it's drying. And I do let it dry overnight. So now, oh, Neo, hello, Neo. We're gonna <laughs> stain this with um, Waverly Wax and the Color Antique. Okay, and so I, like to paint it on and then I typically use a damp scrap piece of cloth to wipe it off and you know I mean do the colors that make you happy make your heart sing or whatever because this is your decor not mine <laughs> but these are the colors that I like and so these are the colors that I use I had some rocks that I got from Dollar Tree and I had some it's not E6000 it's the Gorilla Glue version of E6000 and what I'm doing is trying to Tetris <laughs> these little pebble rock things onto the front of the base of this little birdhouse stand thing. And it goes pretty well. And so far they're holding up pretty good because I did let it dry um, for several, several hours. So that way things wouldn't slide, it slip slide away or anything like that. And I did that, I completely covered the front base with the pebbles rock things. <laughs> Then I needed to make a door, so I had some balsa wood left over. And I'm just trying to measure here and gauge how big I want the door, just freehanding it. And then I <laughs> I tried to use the post-it note to kind of give me a template of sorts. And yeah, just a little bit of erasing and stuff like that, tracing it out. You got to be careful with balsa wood, though, because it can kind of split on you easily. So just be careful. Go slow. Slow and steady wins the race. Then I painted it this really pretty, I think it's Pool Blue by Waverly, and it's a really pretty color, but I just, I don't know, something about it just didn't set right, so I took my chippy brush and I took some Waverly chalk paint, let me see the color. It is the color Peacock, and I just dry brushed over it. And yeah, I liked it better, but then when I had it on there, I was like, oh, no, no, that's not, that's not cute. Anyway. Pay no attention to door color because that's going to change, but I'm taking a green paint pen and I'm drawing swirls all over the birdhouse, front, back, and sides. And now I'm just erasing little, <laughs> the little lines that I drew to kind of give myself a guide. And I'm not really, I don't consider myself an artist, y'all, or a painter <laughs> by any means. I follow several friends like Sarah from GGB DIY and Monica from Up All Night DIY who are really awesome at painting and I just love to watch them paint. But I'm just adding some colors, moss, and I think I used celery and just to add some different colors and hopefully give it some depth and dimension. And I'm just kind of highlighting and going around the vines. And you know, that's, a, that's what crafting is for me, just kind of exploring just different techniques, trying out things, learning new things, and hopefully getting better at new things. And then I'm taking a mixture of, I think it's Christmas green or traditional green, and the lighter color, what is that color? Celery, it's celery, I just looked at my tray. It's celery, and I'm trying to make little leaves all around the vines. And again, if you look closely at them, <laughs> They look like leaves necessarily, but you get the idea of what they're supposed to be, and that's good enough for me. And so I just go around, like I said, all the sides, front, back, and both sides, creating these leaves. Once I have that done, I'm taking some maize, Waverly chalk paint in the color maize, and putting little dots where I want flowers to be. And I'm just using the end of that little tool that I got from Dollar Tree to make those little dots. And then <laughs> I'm taking ballet slipper and purple i think it's true violet or something and i am making essentially five dots five or six dots around the yellow dot to make the flower you can do this lots of different ways you can do lots of different flowers but this is what i chose it's super easy to do and it turns out adorable y'all i'm really 
as I was making it, I was saying to myself, oh, I just love how it's turning out. And I love when crafting is like that for me because it just makes it fun. And I was really enjoying myself when I was making this. I'm going to be covering the roof with some moss, but I knew that if any, any of it was peeking through, I didn't want the metal to show. So I just used some green and brown paint and kind of sponged it on. Then I took some hot glue. Maybe this isn't the best glue to glue this on, but that's what I used. The reason I say it may not be the best glue is because it's kind of coming off a little bit in some spots. And I'm just taking that reindeer moss and I'm just putting hot glue in, you know, just no, no like super specific pattern or anything like that. But I'm just putting down some glue and then I'm putting down the moss. And one thing you have to be careful of is when you're putting hot glue on metal, it does cool faster. So that could be part of my problem. I did go back and add a bunch of hot glue just in little cracks and crevices that I noticed were, you know, needing some extra help staying to the moss staying to the roof. But again, I did it for the other side of the roof as well. And just using my hot glue gun and pressing down the moss, very carefully pressing down the moss because it is hot. <laughs> then I noticed that the front roof line, you could still see the metal. So I'm taking two, just little craft sticks, popsicle sticks, and I've cut off the ends, the rounded ends, and I'm using wood glue to make a little bracket shape, L shape thing. I take some brown paint, and again, you can use any color you want to. Uh, lots of colors would I could have stained it. I could have done a lot of things, but I'm just using some brown paint, and I'm just going to color those because I don't want that. I don't want the natural wood to show on the roof line. I want it to kind of blend in with everything else. And y'all, this is how it turned out. As you notice, I did change the door color to pink and I took off the hinges and just used brown and um, black paint to make the door handle and the window on the door. But I love it. I really, really love it. I just, I just think it looks, I don't know. I just love it. So that's it. And then on the sides, I did carry the rocks around a little bit towards the bottom. And again, I have those leaves and the flowers going all around the, the vine thing going all around the little birdhouse here and i'm going to use this on my porch decor i've got a video coming up soon in a couple weeks that'll show you what i've done to refresh my porch and i'm excited for you guys to see that one as well hey y'all thanks so much for joining me in my craft space today i really do appreciate the company and i appreciate everybody who's liking and subscribing to my channel i'm almost to seven thousand. i can't believe it it just seems like I don't know. I just feel so appreciative of all those that have liked and subscribed and commented. And um, yeah, so I just want to say thanks. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Tell me which one is your favorite in the comments below. And I hope you have an awesome day. And I think that's it. So if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube, or maybe over on Instagram or TikTok or something like that, my handle is Our Grey House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!